Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to yet another update video. Now in my last update video, I did a bit of a behind the scenes thing, where I talked about how I prepare for video series and how I learn the things I do. And this is sort of a follow-up to that. It's going to be the second and final video about that, because now I've actually finished preparing for the audio series. In fact, I could go ahead and start that right now if you're interested. So, let me know, because I'm not against that. Why not? I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> so yeah, I went ahead and did all the things I said I'd be doing then. I designed an architecture for it, and I've implemented that. In fact, I even got a bit carried away with that, because I tried applying it to the rest of the 3D game engine that I, you know, the one I did in C++. And I'm still in the process of doing that, and in fact, I might even do some live streams on that, because that's kind of interesting. I'm trying some new things here that, well, I haven't tried before. Obviously the new architecture stuff, but also some things like octrees and things. And it's kind of interesting, because now everything's... The, the whole central engine is going to be independent from the implementation of it. So, for instance, I could switch out my OpenGL engine and implement a DirectX backend if I wanted to, and it would just work. <laughs> So, that's kind of interesting, I think. And also that allows me to do a few th things, like, for instance, I'm I'm seriously considering bringing in some things like a, a Lua virtual machine or something to, as sort of a scripting language in this new experiment, because the architecture is more allowing of that. So, no, there's a lot of interesting things I'm working on in here that I think, I think might be livestream worthy, if you're interested in that. And while I'm on the topic, why not? <laughs> the Dare Engine. Because I haven't... I said I'd be doing some live streams on that, and I haven't done that. What's up with that? And the answer is... pretty simple. If I'm going to be doing a Dare Engine live stream, I'm going to be doing some physics stuff. And... I, I don't know, I just... I haven't been in a physics-y kind of mood recently. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I am going to do it, just... Well, I haven't been in the mood for it recently. I've been... I've been too busy experimenting with this, and I've found this really interesting. So, yeah. But anyways, before I get too far off topic, the whole point of this video is behind the scenes of how I've been preparing for the audio series, and, well, so let's go ahead and get into that before I get distracted rambling about something else. So, last time, I said I was going to be designing some sort of tentative architecture. Some sort of system that would at least give me a basis to design all my audio code around. It doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be complete, it just has to be something basic that I can easily expand later and that can give some structure, some reasonable structure to my audio code. And here I'm going to talk about sort of how I came up with that. I'm not going to talk too much about how it works, I'm going to save that for the audio series, but here's sort of how I came up with that. The first thing I realized that just about everything is going to need to be an interface. And in fact, someone asked me about that. Someone asked me, Hey Benny, why have you decided to do everything with SDL audio rather than, say, OpenAL, for instance? And the truth is, I haven't. Or at least, I hadn't at the time I was designing the architecture. And so I'm going to have to take an account for that. This audio system that I designed, it could be implemented with SDL, it could be implemented with OpenAL, it could be implemented with just about anything. So that's why it's an interface. The, it's one common way the code is used, but there could be different, various implementations of it. So I came up with this context. I figured this is going to be the main way it's going to be used. We can play audio, pause audio, stop audio, load audio from a file. All these things we can do with the audio. And of course, later I can expand this, but again, tentative architecture, just basic, get something working. And then I decided to design the audio data. I realized that ultimately, audio data doesn't matter how it's represented, it just needs to be able to generate the final sample that can be played in your speakers, so that's how this came about. I also designed this sample info struct, and the, the idea here is that this, these are some ways that I can potentially modify the audio data as it's being played, such as making it louder or quieter, or changing the pitch or something, or changing the panning, potentially. I only put volume in here, but again, 
the idea is expandable. And that's not in our face because there's really not going to be too many different implementations of that struct. And I decided to make the audio object not an interface because it's really just going to be a wrapper of some audio data and sample info. And this is my this was my basic idea of how the audio engine should work. It's not much, it's very tentative, as you can probably tell, but it provides some room for expansion, it provides some basic idea of how I'm going to structure my code, and that's really what I needed. Just something basic, something I can structure my code around. There you go. So, after I got all the architecture designed, the next thing should come as no surprise. I put it into code. I created the audio context, just like I described, created the audio object, pretty much just like I described, audio data, pretty much just like I described. But, yeah, and as you may notice, there's actually a few slight differences here in the actual code from what I'd written up on in my design. And that's because, pretty much from here on out, everything else I do, the magic way I learn everything, the magic way I design my code, everything, all boils down to this simple thing I call the add and adapt process. I'll take what I have, in this case the audio architecture, and as I start filling it out, as I start encountering new things, I'll realize some things just aren't quite complete. Some, there's some ways and places where it just doesn't quite work out as well as it should. For instance, when I implemented the audio context with SDL, I had to have some way to stop the audio, and that means not only is it removed from, well, from playing, it's not being played anymore, but also, if I play it again, it should start playing from the beginning. And I realized, you know, there's really no good way to do that with the way I had my architecture set up. So, I adapted. I changed my audio data to have some reset function that would bring it back to the beginning. So I adapt. I adapted, excuse me. Another thing, for instance, when I was playing with waveform audio files, I realized I don't know where a good really place to show them code, but well I realized that WAV files are really big, so to speak. You know, sometimes they're thirty megabytes, sometimes they're potentially hundreds of megabytes, they can be very big. And if you do it the basic way, the way SDL does it, it loads the entire thing into memory. And I'm sure you can imagine it gets... Well, it's not very nice to have 100 megabyte files floating around in memory, if you can avoid it. So, I realized, you know, I really need some way to stream these files from data as an option. You don't necessarily need to do that. There's no reason to stream every two-second sound clip that's only a few kilobytes off of the disk, but, you know, big things like music that's in waveform form, for instance, you know, probably needs to be streamed from disk. So I changed my... Well, now it's an audio device. I'll talk about that in a moment. I changed my create audio from file function so that now I have some option to potentially stream it from a file rather than just you know, load it into memory, play it from there. And also, you might notice there's now, well, a difference between the audio device, which loads and releases audio, rather than the audio context. And this really comes from the realization that, you know, the audio context really shouldn't care how the audio data is created or how it is released. But the user, you know, you might care. Maybe my particular the particular audio device I give only supports, say, WAV files and MP3s. And you decide, hey, you know, here's this OGG sound effect that I really, really want to play for some reason. So maybe you want to, for instance, extend the device. Maybe you want to add it so that, okay, the create audio from file, if it's WAV or MP3, it just uses the one that's there. Otherwise, it will use this OGG loader that I've created. And then you might so, so yeah, you might extend it to do things like that. And you probably don't want to just extend the whole context to that. You know, what I'm saying is, <laughs> you really shouldn't care what audio files can be created, how they're created, how they're released, whatever. It's just 
no, this is the audio file, this is how to play it. So that's why I decided to explicitly make that separation like that. That's what I'm trying to say here. And yeah, so that's really how it works. As I start trying new things, I start realizing, hey, these are things that could be better. And I start adapting. I add and adapt. Simple as that. Now, like I said, that add and adapt process is really the quote-unquote secret of how I learn everything and how I design my code. Because really, that's what I do. I start out with a basic idea of this is what this is, this is how it should be. And as I start picking up more things, I'll add to that. And when things start not working, I'll adjust it and improve it until eventually it ends up being correct or good enough. So yeah, that's really the... That's how I learn things. That's how I design code. It's how I do quite a few things, actually. Just that add and adapt process. So that, thank you. Hope you've enjoyed this behind-the-scenes stuff. And I'll see you next time, where I'll be doing whatever I'm doing.